a Halloween. Free candy, jack-o'-lanterns, costume parties. It really is a random holiday when you think about it, and it's only getting bigger. In 2016, in the United States alone, consumer spending for Halloween is expected to break the all-time record of $8 billion spent, which includes the $2 billion expected to be spent on costumes. And though we might think of this holiday as just candy and costume parties, Halloween is actually deeply intertwined with religious themes. Some Wiccan and modern paganism groups celebrate it most famously in Salem, Massachusetts, where the Salem witch trials occurred in the 17th century, and some Christian groups worry of heightened demonic activity during this time. But this holiday is also super interesting to scholars of religion. Demons, witches, and monsters, as all facets of human mythology, they all fall under the purview of religious studies. But what is the religious history of Halloween? What cultures influence the rituals that we still practice today, and why do we celebrate it on October 31st anyway? The Celtic festival Samhain is believed to be the predecessor of our contemporary holiday Halloween. And yes, it's pronounced Samhain despite that spelling. Samhain was a seasonal holiday that was celebrated in pre-Christian Ireland, which really wasn't Christianized until about the 4th or 5th centuries CE. It was celebrated from the evening of October 31st until the evening of November 1st, which was considered the start of the winter season in the Celtic calendar. Now, we don't have much firm historical evidence for the holiday of Samhain. Much of what we know comes from the Irish sagas of Celtic mythology, written down in the 9th to 12th centuries CE. These sagas were written down by Christian monks centuries after they were first told, being passed down generation after generation through oral tradition. And even when these monks finally wrote down these sagas, they kind of embellished them with Christian, Christian characteristics. So it's very difficult to determine what is original and what has been Christianized. But scholars such as folklore expert Jack Santino believe that these sagas contain enough historically useful information to tell us about life in pre-Christian Ireland. These medieval sagas describe Samhain as some sort of day of heightened spiritual activity, a day when it was believed that spirits, fairies, and even souls of the dead could more easily pass between the other world and our world. The 12th century saga, The Boyhood Deeds of Fionn, for example, says, For the fairy mounds of Ireland were always open around Samhain. For on Samhain, nothing could ever be hidden in the fairy mounds. Here and elsewhere, these medieval sagas talk about portals opening between the fairy realm and our world. These could have been hills or caves that were thought to be passages between these two worlds. One of the earliest rituals associated with Samhain seems to have been the lighting of huge bonfires. We don't exactly know what they were meant to do, but some scholars hypothesize the fires were meant to guide the spirits coming into the world or possibly to ward away harmful spirits. These fires might have also been used as sites of divination where people could gather around and try to tell the future. In fact, originally it seems that Samhain had a lot to do with storytelling, prophecy, and divination. In the medieval saga, The Book of Lismore, for example, a female fairy would appear on Samhain and tell all kinds of secrets. Now, we shouldn't pretend that Halloween is 100% influenced by Celtic culture. It is important to say that the holiday that we celebrate as Halloween is a patchwork of traditions, especially traditions borrowed from Christian Europe. Cultural historian Dr. Nicholas Rogers, in his exhaustive history of Halloween, writes, if Samhain imported to Halloween a supernatural charge and an intrinsic liminality, it did not offer much in way of actual ritual practices. Most of these developed in conjunction with the medieval holy days of all all Souls and All Saints Day. And he seems to be right. Many of the rituals that we recognize in modern celebrations of Halloween seem to come from a much later period when Christianity had become the dominant religion in Europe. Some as early as the medieval period, but others from the early modern period, like the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries. First of all, our word Halloween comes from an elision of the title All Hallows' Eve, because it was the evening before the holiday All Hallows' Day, or All Saints' Day, as celebrated by the Roman Catholic Church on November 1st. As the name suggests, All Saints Day was a day set aside to celebrate all of the saints in Christianity, and taken together with its partner holiday All Souls Day on November 2nd, these holidays were an opportunity to pray for newly departed souls, or the martyrs who sacrificed their lives for Christianity. Now, some people say that the Roman Catholic Church chose November 1st to help Christianize Samhain, maybe to help convert the people of Ireland, but it's a little more complicated than this. You see, basically all Christian groups in late antiquity and the early medieval period had an All Saints Day, but not all groups celebrated it on November 1st. By the year 800, you had some Christian groups celebrating it on November 
first, mostly from the British Isles in Germany, but Christian churches in Syria and Greece were celebrating it around Pentecost in spring and summer. So we can't exactly say that All Saints Day was invented specifically to Christianize Samhain. It seems like by the time Christianity was a big deal in Europe, most Christian groups had already invented their own holiday to celebrate dead saints. However, some syncretism between Samhain and All Saints Day might have occurred in the British Isles in Western Europe in general. For example, an old Irish calendar written by a Christian monk from the 9th century still refers to November 1st as Samhain. So the Celtic holiday probably did influence All Saints Day, but this influence was felt more in the West than compared to other Christian groups throughout Europe. And it's here in Western Europe that All Saints Day started to take on this carnival-like atmosphere that we're more familiar with in Halloween. By the 16th century, people in Ireland, Scotland, and Wales were dressing in costume to celebrate All Saints Day, possibly to try to trick spirits that they thought were floating around on that night. People in England practiced something called souling, going from door to door asking for food in return for a prayer for the dead, which is possibly a direct precursor to our practice of trick or treat. But instead of candy, souling seemed to have included passing out special bread called soul cakes. One author writes in 1880, the children go round to the houses early and late on All Saints Day, not on All Souls Day, and sing monotonously a doggerel. The lines vary a little with the groups of children, three to six in a group. And some of these solars would carry around little lanterns carved out of turnips. These early jack-o'-lanterns were possibly thought to ward away harmful spirits or maybe to help symbolize a soul trapped in purgatory. So over the course of history, October 31st evolved from a Celtic holiday that celebrates the changing of the seasons and the harvest to a Christian holiday celebrating dead saints. But one thing stayed the same, the thought that October 31st was a day of heightened spiritual activity, whether that be the fairies of Celtic mythology or the demons of Christian theology. And I find this process really interesting. It's not just a simplistic story of church authorities forcing a Christianized holiday onto a pagan holiday, but it's a more complex process involving a lot of communities, religious systems, and cultures. Remember, the historical context of 18th century Europe is very different from the historical context of pre-Christian Ireland. Yes, it does seem that Halloween originated from a pre-Christian holiday called Samhain, but it grew and flourished during Christianized Europe in the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries. In fact, Nicholas Rogers, who I quoted earlier, thinks Halloween is just as much influenced by the rowdy celebrations of Guy Fawkes Day on November 5th as it's influenced by Samhain. So like I said, Halloween is a patchwork of traditions with a very long and complicated history, and a history that's deeply intertwined with human mythology and religion. But what are your thoughts? Are there any rituals surrounding Halloween that I missed? What do you think about the possible syncretism between Samhain and All Saints Day? Leave your comments below, and as always, thanks for liking and subscribing, and thanks especially to our patrons on Patreon for supporting the show. So thanks again, I'll see you next time, and happy Halloween!